single successful conversion amongst the military. They actually wrote in their diary that preaching to the military was like plowing amongst rocks. The main reason for this is probably due to the fact that the Schofields, being Wesleyan Methodists, were teetotalers and preached total abstinence from the demon drink, whereas most of the military here were Irish Catholics, and I don't need to explain that little cultural stereotype, do I? <laughs> <laughs> but the largest building here on Sierra Island was the military barracks. It took up the whole flattened area we've walked past. It housed 95 military, their wives and children. The peak muster here on Sierra Island in 1828 was 531 people, and that included in the 95 military, 14 women and 27 children. Now these aren't convicts or convicts' children, they're the children of the people in charge. Most were the children of the military. Now the roof of the barracks was designed to capture rainwater and take it directly into that pit. That is not a well, which would seem like a good idea when there's no fresh water source on the island, but they ferried the fresh water in usually from Birch's Inlet, that uh, beach that you'll see, which was uh, one of the tributaries of the Gordon, of course. But that is actually a storage pit for lime slurry. Up the Gordon River, they found lime. There's a kettle mill still in the bush, still usable today. Lime was mined, burnt and slaked there and then kept under rainwater to keep it stable. It was then dried out in small quantities to be used as required as fertiliser in the gardens. Isn't that right, Bill? Absolutely. Yep. Also for sanitising the long drops, which is the cliff face on the windy side of the island. So <laughs> some days you've got to time your business right. And they also mix the lime with sand to make mortar. Now the bricks you see here weren't made here on Sierra Island, but two kilometres across the water they found an excellent seam of clay. They made and fired all the bricks there and brought them back complete. About 250,000 bricks used in the settlement. And you still see some prints left by the convicts and a number of them. Now this is puzzle number three, the solitary confinement jail. And the puzzle isn't that it's here. You'd expect there to be a lockup in a place like this. Even being transported and then sent here isn't enough for some of you to start behaving. But the puzzle is, after it's been built to these very specific dimensions, six cells, brand spanking new, it's then seldom used. On average, only one cell two days a week. So they didn't need to build it this big anyway. Why it was built was no doubt as an alternative to those very high levels of physical punishment here on Sierra Island. And we've talked about the Macquarie Harbour cat. Now there was only ever one hanging to take place here on Sierra Island. You were generally taken to Hobart to be executed. But in 1824, Matthew Brady escaped with 14 others and was rumoured to be assembling an army in the bush somewhere. And so there were frenzy of elaborate escape attempts. You all want to go and join him. So to quell any subsequent rebellion, Governor Arthur brought three men back here from Hobart to be hanged here for a murder they committed during an escape attempt from this place. But no wonder it was the only hanging. You lot turned it into a joke. For start, it's the only time you all got the day off work. No point trying to teach you an example if you're not here to see it. But you start singing songs, telling dirty jokes. And the three condemned men, William Allen, Thomas Hudson and Francis Oates, before they go through the drop, they kick their boots off into the crowd and give a cheer. Basically saying, hey, we don't need these anymore. No more work for us. Because, of course, capital punishment was meant to be the great deterrent. But some of you just saw it as the most effective means of escape from a place like this. Now, if you come around this side, you'll be able to see how solitary confinement has been constructed. We have a narrow corridor for access and observation. Running back on the left-hand side, we have those six cells. Now, you'll note the walls both externally and between each cell, half a metre of English bond brickwork thick. That's bricks at 90 degrees header and stretcher, so it's soundproof. You'll also notice that there are no windows, total darkness. But part of the punishment is in the very dimensions of each cell. You see this first cell the most clearly. So it's three feet wide, just over six feet long, and six feet floor to ceiling. Very specific dimensions given to a trade of the day. Now you're looking at me like, you know, I grew up with only metric. Well, there's a reason I'm giving it to you in feet. Who would be told to make it three feet wide, six feet long, and six feet under? The dimensions given to a grave digger. So you could lie flat on your back on the dirt floor, contemplating your mortality and where you may spend eternity 
in silence, darkness and isolation in your own grave. Now, while this was built to be total sensory deprivation, it's not quite. It's surprisingly well ventilated. But wait till you see what the buildings next door are. So, of course, you've made your way past the tannery, and tanning leather is about the most disgusting smelling job known to man. Do you know what they use to turn animal skins into leather? Yeah. No? Think about the most disgusting smelling thing you can, and you'd probably be right. <laughs> You're too polite to say it, aren't you? <laughs> they use urine and fecal matter. So that's we and poo, kids. <laughs> so imagine those smells mm. wafting over from the tannery to those poor men locked in solitary. They can't get away. But at least it probably provided a welcome distraction. The smells of freshly baking bread also wafting over to the poor men locked in solitary. What a combination, hey? So here we have the bakehouse and what you can see is a Suffolk Parish oven. You'll note the bricks at the mouth are vertical. So how it's been built, the floors lay dead level, the walls are built up and then it's filled in with a mound of sand, like building a sand castle. And then the dome is created by slightly shaving the corner of each brick, laying them vertically in a spiral pattern, working from the centre outwards. Once the bricks are in position, you rake out the sand, the bricks drop, lock into place, supported by their own weight, no mortar. You'll also notice there's no chimney. That height in the wall is where they slid and hewn pine timbers above the oven to fast cure them. And there's only the one entry and exit point, the front door, where a series of butterfly vents control the temperature. So how efficient is an oven like this? Incredibly. See, the trick is the floor's dead level, not the dome. You have a slight tilt in the dome just off centre. Lay a tie little fire just inside the curve on the opposite side. Creates a spinning vortex of heat. Heats the chamber evenly and efficiently, producing no smoke. So you don't need a flue, which is what all your heat escapes up, so it would hold its temperature for hours. They could bake 400 loaves of bread in here with just one barrow load of wood. So the diet, guess what? You're getting bread. <laughs> Give us this day our daily bread. Each convict was given a pound of bread, essentially a small loaf about this size. And we know that they grind the wheat into flour here with the poor men chained to the capstan. With the added advantage that by the time the wheat does arrive by boat from Hobart, it, it's usually chock full of weevils. Do you know what those are? No. They're little insects. So what do you think they do with them? <laughs> yeah, they just grind them in as well. <laughs> They're actually loaded with B vitamins, so do you, do you like Vegemite? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is like Vegemite with legs. <laughs> You're also given salted beef Vegemite. and pork, distinctly green and slimy by the time it reaches you, and occasionally a potato, but it's not a diet adequate for the hard physical labour you're doing. And you are not permitted to supplement your diet. But we know you lot are doing this. The reports of men being found with fish hooks, and we know that some of the convicts and the work gangs on the mainland are digging pits to catch frost to kangaroo, wallaby, wombat. And you're keeping the fresh meat for yourself and then bribing the military with these skins to keep quiet about it. Well, hang on, then how do we know it's happening? Well, a few of the lads in the military aren't too bright. See, they are trotting straight to the tannery with these illicit skins <laughs> that nobody's supposed to know about. They're then turning up on the inventory. Well, you can't blame the guys in the military. They're just after a bit of value adding. I mean, there's no superannuation policies here. You better lie in your pockets while you can. But that brings us to puzzle number four. There's certainly such a booming black market economy here on Sierra Island, such a roaring trade and contraband that some of you lot in Hobart re-offended just to get sent here. You want a piece of the action. Get ahead into the shelter now. Thomas Longprayer, the Chief Commissary 